Hey guys, still here, and welcome to Avorian. Avorian is a game that I have been playing since uh, February 24th or 25th, so about two weeks now. And I was a bit skeptical about it at first. I thought, okay, what are we doing? Is this Minecraft in space or something? Um, that is one way to look at it. And the first couple of hours of me playing were, what the hell am I doing? And... In two weeks, I have put 100 hours into this game. It is only moderately addicting. Um, it takes up a lot of time. It is such a great game. I'd say it is very, very underrated. But the problem with me with Avorian is that it is exceptionally hard to cover in videos. Because it is a sandbox game. And that means that there is no one way to play it. There is no one set way to do things and no one way to accomplish your goals. Whether that is to become a big warlord and have a lot of ships. Whether that is to become uh, this one battleship captain and command a massive warship. Whether it is to use an aircraft carrier or, quite the opposite, to just leave the, well, the casual relaxing lifestyle of a trader. And you can do all of these things. And you can do them at the same time. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, allowing you a bit of a glimpse on what is going on. Uh, I have for a long time been thinking, how the hell am I going to cover this? And I have no idea. So it's just going to be a bit of a glance of seeing what is what. What is Avorian? What does it do? Um, and what can you do with it? And I can give you a glimpse for more than one reason. Um, I cannot envision what you can envision. I don't have your level of fantasy, so you might be able to build ships which are far more beautiful than mine. Uh, you might be able to build stuff which is far more advanced or far more creative or far more effective than what I have been building. That's the thing with these sandbox games. Now the graphics initially I th know might throw some people off, but give this game a chance. Because the graphics were initially what threw me off. And I thought, wow, okay, is this really going to be playing? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, it is, quite a lot. Now, I'm going to be starting a new galaxy. And the galaxy starter means that you're starting a single-player server on your computer and you connect to it. So you sort of connect to your own server. The server is private, only you can connect to it and you don't need an internet connection. You will not play online. You can, however, if you want to play online. There is a multiplayer option in this game. And when you use the multiplayer option, you're actually able to play with friends, uh, build ship pilots, and one gunner, for example. You can have alliances, you can go to war with each other, or uh, against each other. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, just yesterday, on March 9th, it came out of early access. And that means that the game is now, well, officially its class is released. But that's not really telling the whole story, because the devs have said yesterday that they're going to be supporting this game for the next two years, at least. And I believe them when I say that. I have had really good interactions with the devs so far. Uh, when I had questions, they were quick to answer those, and, well, they just, they just seem like really good guys. Alright, quick overview, what are you looking at? What you see over here in the middle is my little ship. This is a, uh, well, a ship might be a big word. It's a mining drone. What this thing can do is build ships, or at least build the starting point of a ship, and it can mine. Beyond that, it cannot really do that much. Now, what you see here on the screen are asteroids. These can contain iron, and with iron being the first tier of building material, what I want to do is mine some iron. Now this is space, so you're traveling in a 3D area. Um, so I can go left, right, up, down, sorry, backwards uh, and forwards, but also up and down. And you can do strafing maneuvers as well, if you so choose. Over here on the top, you see that I'm currently traveling at 75 meters per second. Uh, that might not seem like a lot, but in order to get to kilometers per hour, you need to do this by a factor of 3.6. So that actually makes my speed quite good. I'm currently in sector 246 by minus 376. That does not mean a whole lot. And well, actually this is a good moment to show you how big this game is. I am here on the map in this one little sector. 
The sector contains a shipyard, a repair dock, an equipment dock, a coal mine and a resource depot. It has two gates and it is controlled by the Buccaneers of Puk Viobukt. These names are all randomly generated. Um, and even if they weren't, they are so hard to pronounce that I wouldn't even know it if they did re um, re uh, sorry, if they did reuse them. Now, what I can do in this sector is um, interact with all these buildings and start mining and, well, pretty much do whatever the hell I want. Now, the sector next to me is another sector, but it seems like there's nothing in there. There are plenty of empty sectors in this game. The sectors which you see over here, this one has an unknown energy signature. That's something that I can investigate. And this line over here indicates what my jump range is, so how I can travel from sector to sector. One way is to use the jump range, another way is to use the gates, and a third way is to use wormholes. Wormholes allow you to travel very, very far from one sector, well, pretty much across the galaxy to another. Let me zoom out a little bit more, and you can see just how big this place is. Welcome to the universe. Do you feel small yet? This is how big the map is. All of these sectors can be visited. Not all of them are going to have something in it, but all of them can be visited. Now, what I'm going to do initially is show you some of the build process. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is mine some of this asteroid, because I know that this is iron, considering it has this glowing brownish tint around it. And... I'm using my mining lasers on the mining drone to do that. And that is it. Okay, I now have, if I press I, I have 280 points of iron. I also have 10,000 credits, and this also shows you the resources that are the higher tier resources. Titanium, Neonite, Trinium, Zanian, Organite, and Ovorian. Avorian, hence the name of the game, is what you are eventually looking to get because it's the highest tier of material, it's the strongest stuff, and it can build you eventually the most powerful ships. You can find Avorian in the middle of the universe. Now, it's not something I really want to travel to right now because the ships that you start to encounter, hostile ships, I might add, get increasingly dangerous the closer that you get to the middle of the universe. Initially, you might find lightly armed and especially lightly armored pirates, but the closer you get, you can find really powerful ships, which will, well, they will look at you once and then blow you up. So it's not like you're going to rush to the middle of the universe and be done with it. Unfortunately, that does not work. Now I'm going to be mining until I get about 500 points of iron so I can find my first ship. And a little bit more than that so I can actually build the ship out a bit more than just having one base block. Because that is what this game is about. Building ships, building stations and well I was going to say get rich but that's not really what is going on. In the way that I look at it Getting rich is just a way to play the game. It is not the only way to play the game. Uh, because in another save that I have, and I will show you this as well, um, I have quite a bit of money, but I don't really use it beyond buying weapons and fighters for my carrier. So with those things in mind, you could argue that making money is the point of the game. But I consider it just another resource, uh, much like in real life. I don't think that making money should be your end goal. It's just a resource. Now, over here, we can find an asteroid of a different color. And this is titanium. The titanium asteroids have a slightly different glow to them. And the titanium asteroids give you, as the name indicates, titanium, which you can use to build light ships. These lighter ships are usually a bit easier to maneuver and, um, well, you still get a lot of performance out of them. I'm going to mine a little bit of this as well. And again, the graphics might throw you off like they did me when I first started playing this game, but 
at some point you just don't see it anymore. Much like Minecraft, I suppose. Where initially you go, oh, what the hell is this? Where are we back in the 1990s graphics-wise? But eventually you just go, eh, it's a game. It has great gameplay, and that's something that I care more about. All right, we got 368 units of titanium so far. And by the way, you can... Um, sorry about that. You can significantly speed up the way that you are mining asteroids if you build either a mining ship with mining lasers or if you build dedicated mining ships that do that for you. All right, at this point, I have 1,797 units of iron and 535 of titanium, so it's time to build my first ship. For that, I click the flag icon, the found ship. And this is going to be the stealth one. Founding fee of 500 iron, and I have eight included crew members. If you click alliance ship, by the way, I believe that this allows you to um, use your ships in your alliance, which can be with other players. I'm not going to do that because I'm gonna, just going to be showing this off solo. So here we go. Um... This is my little bit of nothing. This is my cube. This is the start of the ship. Now over here you have again the resources on the top left side of the screen. So this shows you what sources you have. Over here you have the different blocks that you can build. More on that in a second. I have a couple of turrets. I have two iron mining turrets and I have double chain gun turrets if I want to start fighting. You can uh, paint your ship, you can repair your ship, you can save the design, you can select one blocks or multiple, and then you have a couple of buttons to adjust the blocks. Over on the right hand side you have the dimensions of your ship, width, height and length, and the amount of hull hit points that you have. 32 is very, very little. Another ship of mine has, uh, I believe, somewhere in 100,000 hit points. Which I still think, considering that I haven't progressed that far, is a pretty small-ish amount of hit points. People who have been playing this game for a long time probably know a lot better. Anyway, we need acceleration, we need deceleration, we need yaw, we need pitch, and we need roll. And that's something that I'm going to be building now. Now the block uh, menu allows you to use several different blocks. You can see that some of them are grayed out. For example, the iron hanger, where you can use your fighters, it's not available in this material. You cannot build iron hangers, nor can you build them out of titanium, nor out of neonite. Once you get to trinium, you can finally start to build hangers. And the same goes for, for example, shield generators, um, iron generators, which generate power, integrity field generators, which means that um, the blocks get a sort of protective shielding around it, and if you accidentally ram into something, they all don't automatically break off. And like that, you have a whole bunch of other blocks. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, build this ship out a bit more. I want it to have a mining capability. So what I'm going to do is set up a cargo bay. So if I, at some point, want to go trading, I can. I'm going to need a bit of crew quarters crew compartment and I can build this out a bit more uh, I can have 26 crew members on this ship I want to have engines so these things are going to allow me to move forwards and um, I want to have brake thrusters these are directional thrusters so they only fire in one direction and if I set them up like this on the top right hand side you can see how much deceleration that's going to allow me which is 46 meters per second deceleration now what I can do is uh, I can yaw so I can go left and right but I cannot yet pitch and I cannot yet roll for that I'm gonna set up a gyro these two will allow me to roll let's make those a bit smaller so now I have roll capability of uh, 4 rads per second and I still need to pitch up and down, for which I can use, again, the gyros, but I need to rotate them. Now they're going to be pitching up and down. Uh, yeah, I can make those the same size as my engines. And now I can uh, pitch up, down, left, right, and I can roll. So this is my little ship. I can roll, 
I can go left and right, and I can pitch up and down. What I cannot very well do is strafe, because I don't have the thrusters for that. So what I'm going to do is set up a couple of additional directional thrusters, uh, make those a little smaller, and those yellow, maybe green, I don't know, colorblind, yellow greenish things on the side tell you what way these blocks are facing. So if I set it up like this, now I can actually side strafe. But I cannot go up and down yet, because I don't have the thrusters for that. So for that, I'm going to set up another thruster array up here. Rotate that a bit. Uh, make it a bit smaller, like that. Now, if you cover a block, like what I did here, because this block, if it fires downwards, it's firing into my cargo bay, Avorian doesn't care about that. In Space Engineers, this would get you into trouble. In Avorian, it doesn't. So in Avorian, you can actually build your ship uh, and your engines completely contained, concealed, and, well, covered up with whatever other block you want. I could even put, for example, uh, another slab of hull on top of it, and the game wouldn't care. I can still use that up and down thrust. So now I can also move downwards, and I can move upwards. Good start. Now I need to add some guns. <coughs> uh, and I want to make the ship look a little nicer. So let's go with the corners and turn those around. And make them a bit smaller. No, not that small. Oh, right. These are two different blocks. Now, I am not great at building ships. I kind of know what most of the blocks do at this point. But beyond that... Please don't ask me to build a ship. Because it's not going to come out looking very pretty. Let's put it that way. I can put these things on the front. I can put a, a wedge on the front. Let's make that a bit smaller. There. Uh, that actually gives me some slots for my turrets as well. So I can set up the two iron mining turrets that I have. And now, if I select those and add them to a weapons group, and I'm not going to make this a full tutorial in this video, this is just more of an overview, I can now use my two mining lasers, if I had crew for them. And that's the problem. I don't have enough crew to man all the mining turrets, so hopefully this resource depot over here is going to be able to supply me with some crew. And I need to go in for docking here. Whoa, 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 whoa! Shit. Already crashed into it because I did not yet have enough braking thrust. Alright, we're docked. Hire crew. Uh, these guys unfortunately do not yet have any miners. So, specific mining crew is not available, but what I can do is get a couple of standard crew members. Unfortunately, now my ship is overcrowded. But what I can do at least is use the uh, auto assign. And then the standard crew members are going to be used as miners, which means that my mining turrets are now operational. And to make sure that the crew actually has enough room, I'll set up a, another crew compartment over here. If it wants to fit. And then maybe another smaller one up here. There. Alright, I confused these things together. He said. <coughs> Not quite. Um, how much capacity do I have now? 32. So now everybody has room on the ship. Now I can start using my mining lasers. So it is back over to a different asteroid. And once again, try not to slam into an asteroid if you have a weak ship like this, because it is just going to blow up in your face. It's not going to go down very well. Now start mining. And I'm now actually mining quite a bit faster, because these mining lasers have more power than the ones on the mining drone, or on my little 
well, resource drone, I guess. So I can get a bit more titanium. And with that, I can start upgrading parts on my ship to titanium, or I can make the ship bigger altogether. Now this is what you can do in Avorian, but of course you can also fight. So I'm going to load up my other save game and show you exactly how that works. All right, welcome back. What you see over here is the Defiant, or at least the ship that I have named Defiant. Now, as I have mentioned, I am not great at ship design, so uh, it usually looks like a battle brick, or at least what I call a battle brick, which basically means a very bricky looking ship that I try to spruce up with a couple more gentle, sleek lines. The Defiant has 590,000 hit points, and a shield of 1.8 million. As opposed to what I showed you previous with the small ship that I built to start mining out more, um, that ship had about, I think when I ended with it, 150, maybe 200 hit points. It was really, really low. The ship has a lot of guns on it as well. Some of them are automatic, some of them are manual. <clears throat> Again, this is something that you will encounter later on in the game. My ship has uh, railgun turrets, it also has launchers, which fire rockets. It has a couple of bolter turrets, which are... Well, I, could, I suppose you could compare them to a sort of chain gun. And I have a couple of salvaging turrets. These allow me to, if I destroy an enemy ship, um, to actually immediately start salvaging it, which is another way to get resources. You don't always have to mine stuff. You can always just destroy your enemies and salvage their corpses. That's, <laughs> it sounds a bit grim, but that's what this thing does very well. To assist me, I also have hangar with fighters. I have the Thunderbirds, as I've named them, which are laser fighters. I have uh, the Lasers, which are laser fighters, but better versions. I have the Storm Riders, which are units which use uh, electric, yeah, which use lightning. I have a couple of Rocketeers, as I like to call them. These are salvaging fighters. Actually, they're not supposed to be salvaging fighters. These are... Ah, uh, right. These are the Rocketeers. I misnamed those. <coughs> uh, these are the Rocketeers. And this is another wing of salvagers. Salvagers 2. Right. So let's pick a fight. In this game, I have progressed far closer to the middle of the galaxy, but I'm not quite there yet. I have, however, encountered a lot of resistance, and um, the closer you get, the more resistance you're going to encounter. Now, I know that in this sector over here, there is a couple of pirate ships. So what I'm going to do is jump over there, orient your ship in the direction of the jump, and off we go. Right. Here are the pirates. Immediately my automatic turrets open up. And what you can see down here on the bottom right hand side is how much hull power they have, which is 15,000. They have 13,000 points of shields, well, left, because my turrets are working them over pretty quick. They have uh, 670 Omicrons of firepower. Omicrons are what the game uses as a way to calculate how much firepower a ship has. By contrast, my ship, I believe, has uh, 21,000 Omicrons. So I have a lot more firepower than that ship does. Now, let's see if this guy wants to play. This is a Ravager. AI-generated ship. And nobody is going to be sorry when these things go. i got to be careful not to fly into it. Because collision damage is a real thing and is not stopped by your shields. It is not stopped. So if you collide with something, there's a good chance that you'll actually do quite a bit of damage to yourself as well. Now this ship is very powerful, the Defiant, my ship. And uh, the enemy warships currently are a bit of a pushover. Now the ship is dead. There's just a wreckage up here in front of me. But what you can see happening over here is that my salvaging turrets are working over this ship and trying to tear it apart. And I'm immediately getting scrap, trinium, scrap, neonite, I think, scrap, iron, depending on what that enemy ship is made of. I'm also salvaging their weapons as much as I can. 
They might have upgrades on their ship. So all of these things are currently being, uh, well, being vacuumed up into my ship. Something else I can show you is the fighters. Uh, let's send out the Thunderbirds on a defensive roll. You can see them coming out, all these little icons. And they're currently working over this ship here. <coughs> I'm going to turn off my own turrets. And you can see that the enemy shielding is going down pretty quick. That's just my fighters doing work. And these are, well, not even the best fighters that I have. Um, the bottom, I haven't even explained this. I have energy usage. All ships have a generator which generates a set amount of energy. And you want to make sure that you have a bit of a buffer there. So that if you have something that requires a lot of power, you can regen that power. The next one, battery capacity. How much battery do you have? Uh, this is sort of overflow buffer in case you need more power than what you're currently generating. Next, I have... Sorry about that. Next, I have my shields, currently at 94%. And finally, I have a hull at 96%. Now, these ships are so weak that I don't really have to do much. And uh, that's why I also picked this sector to engage in. Because I know that the enemy cannot really do much to me. I can just sit here and talk about the game for a bit. And show you what the fighters can do, show you what the salvagers can do. Speaking of the salvagers, this is another wreckage. And let's say I don't have salvage turrets on my ship. What I can do is send out my salvagers and tell them to harvest. You're going to see them departing out of the, uh, the sides of the ship here. Those bluish force field things. That's where the hangars are. And what they're now doing is tearing this ship apart very quickly. It's a bit like vultures, well, cleaning up a corpse. And they're immediately salvaging everything that they can. Resources, weapons, stuff like that. So that I don't have to worry about it. They do that in a decent range of your ship. And I can just, in the meanwhile, take down this other ship here. Which is currently uh, <coughs> trying to be a bit of a nuisance. And three ships took it out of commission. Now these ships, as I mentioned, are very weak. It's not something that you should always expect. Because I've also had it happen that this ship, or a previous iteration of it, almost got destroyed. And that's because I started venturing into territory that I was just not ready for. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to show you is that you can have your stations and your mines... Uh, actually, let's get the Defiant out of here. I want you guys to come back. <coughs> Got to dock your fighters first. They're all swarming back into the cargo bay. Oh, sorry, into the hangars. Taking a bit of fire, but he's more of an annoyance than anything else. All right, I have all my fighters aboard. Let's set a course for this sector. Give this guy the good news. Come on. I don't have to kill him, I just think he's annoying. <coughs> there we go. And off we are. Right, over to the mine. Because something else that you can do in this game is just have automated mines. I have set up a couple just to make me money in the background. I don't really have to do much about them. They are fully automated. They mine their own stuff. They sell their own stuff. And, well, unless they get attacked, I really don't have to pay attention to them at all. Which is really quite convenient. Uh, switch to the mine. Switch to the sector. The hell? For some reason the game doesn't quite allow me to switch to the sector. Alright, here we are at the sector. This is my mine. And what my mine is currently doing is pushing another asteroid away to make sure that there is enough docking space available. Uh, it seems that it's a bit bugged though because the mine keeps getting pushed away and then comes back. I don't know why that is. 
What this thing does, this is a noble metal mine, and it mines noble metals. I mean, duh. What it generates is gold and platinum. And the way that I have it set up is that these things automatically get sold. So I don't have to even use a single ship of my own. I have set up a uh, trade item or a trade thing so that it actively sells goods to other traders. So if there's, um, let's say, a station nearby and they happen to have a ship, they can come get these goods. Or it could be a random trader that happens to be venturing the sector and that just brings in uh, a bit of money while I'm not actually commanding this station. If I want to, I can make this station as big or as small as I want to. What I have right now over here is a cargo bay, a shield generator, another shield generator, uh, crew quarters, and a cargo, oh, sorry, uh, a nano, a neonite generator. That's all that I have. So shields, cargo, and crew. And then a couple of docks over here. That's all that this thing has, and that's enough. That's all that I needed to do. If I wanted to, I could start adding more. I could make this a sort of miniature base. So let's say that this is a sector that uh, faces a lot of threats. I could set up a hangar. And now I have, let's see how much capacity I have. Uh, now I have 105 hangar space, which is 105 small fighters, 31 medium fighters, or 13 large fighters. And then I can also start to manufacture those things on the spot by using an assembly block. Now I can start to generate my own fighters over here, which would serve as a sort of defensive base in this sector, or as a defense for the, the station itself. All right, I'm not going <coughs> to actually place these down. Um, this is a very, very wide overview of Avorian. The game has so much more depth that it's a nightmare to cover on video because possible without making it well over a couple of hours. And that's kind of the, the beauty of this game as well. It has so much depth, it has so much to explore, so much different designs that you can figure out, so much difference in, in activities that you can do, that it's keeping you entertained for hours. Or at least it is me. Now, I did not get uh, any sort of promotion or affiliate or whatever like that from the devs. They just said, hey, uh, this is a game you might enjoy. We're coming out of early access. Uh, here's a key. If you like it, then please make a video and otherwise just ignore it which I think is fair. Um, I was very skeptical about the game at first, but I absolutely fell in love with it. And as I mentioned, I put in 100 hours in two weeks, uh, which was also bolstered by my not being able to make videos last week due to the flu. This is what I did all week. The only other game I played was World of Warships, uh, maybe two hours in total, but the rest, this. Avorian. Be careful with this game. <laughs> Be careful. Uh, it's going to take up more of your time than you might want. If that's something that you're very susceptible to, like me, uh, it can be a dangerous game. Much like uh, the X games, like X3, um, X3, Albion Prelude, Turn Conflict. It's a bit like that, only with even more freedom. Because not only can you design your own ships, you can also build your own turrets. You can build your own type of fighter. You can do anything as long as you can envision it. Now I'm going to place a link down below in the description to the Steam page. So if you want to get it there, then by all means. Um, I'm not sure yet how slash if I'm going to be covering this game further. I think sandbox games lend themselves best to tutorials. Quick videos that show you how to do something so that you can then run with it and implement it into your own game. Because a let's play, oof, I think that's gonna be very hard on this game. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any great suggestions on the, how to do a video series on this. And let me know if you want to see more of this game. And I shall see you guys soon for, uh, well, either this game or others in future videos. See you then.